My name is Yulia Thomas, and today we are going to talk to the executive management team and to learn more about the company, its vision and mission, and the strategy for years to come. Hello, Mahil. It's great to see you here. We would like to know more about uh, the overview of what Tech5 stands for, uh, its history, its team, who we are. Okay, thank you very much, Yulia. Um, so Tech5 has got a very interesting <coughs> history and background. Uh, the company was formed by a team of uh, biometric experts, um, people that had been working together in the, in the field of, of biometrics and uh, biometric registration for many years. Um, most of us will know each other for 10 plus years. Um, at some point, we, we saw that there was a clear need for a, a new a company with a new positioning in the marketplace, um, for focusing not only on biometric technologies, but also how that would play out in the future and how they could benefit and the world's population and how they would solve some of the issues that we had seen working for other companies. And that's where you see the crossroads between biometric expertise and the digital ideas of the future, um, where we can actually make a claim that you know, somebody, first of all, has full control over his own digital ID, and secondly, can always prove that the digital ID is his or hers by linking it to a stray of strong biometric authentication. What are the currently is the status of the company and where, where does it go in terms of growth, geographies uh, and plans? So, um, you know, as, as I said before, the, the, some of the initial messages and, and positioning that we defined were, were probably very successful. Um, it was recognized that the you know, the and the kind of strategy that we had for the company was was the right one in the sense that we really were addressing a need um, that was quickly developing. Um, so we attracted quite some interest, um, and not just from investors, uh, from whom we um, uh, received a, a, a sizable financial injection over the last few years, uh, but even most importantly from employees, from people that wanted to work with us. Um, over the last two years, we had an intake of at least 30, 40 people across the world um, of people called, on, called up to the uh, our mission um, and, and the kind of messaging. Um, and as a result, you know, we opened subsidiaries a um, little bit across the world, um, mostly where our projects and major partners are. Uh, so we recently opened a, uh, an entity in the UAE um, in uh, Dubai. Um, we opened an entity in India. Um, today we're talking um, in Lisbon, uh, Portugal. That's where our, our main operational office is, is located, um, and in the US. So you see that you know, wherever we got activity, you know, we want to be close to where either the partner is or where the major project is. And as a result, um, of course, our company language is English, but um, um, we have people from 10 plus nationalities in the, in the, in the, in the company. And I think a combined ex experience, both in, in biometrics and, uh, and digital ID of over 100 years. Tell us a little bit more about the background of the company, its history, what its um, main projects were uh, of its co-founders, and uh, why are we doing what we are doing now? Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting, uh, interesting question. Thank you. See. Um, because people always ask us, you're a relatively young company, but you already got a lot of experience under your belt, um, and that a lot of many people with uh, with uh, huge expertise. So how did you manage to you know get it together so quickly? Um, so obviously we all worked for other companies before founding Tech Five, um, and in those other companies we had you know, great opportunities to get involved in the sort of projects that we are that are currently paying off in terms of expertise. A um, very important example is the India Antar program, the UID program, um, where there are currently about 1.3 billion people enrolled, largest biometric project, and where um, we have people like our, not only our co-founder, but whole part of that's a large part of his team, um, and our parts, a large part of my team on the commercial side have been involved for years, uh, where we could witness and learn you know, what it takes to um, to achieve this such a large biometric deployment, what the particularities are, um, what are sort of the, the challenges to overcome, not just 
working with people because at the end of the day, biometrics and work with biometrics means you work with people, and but also from an organizational standpoint, what what organizational support do you need in order to make a large biometric deployment happen? Hi, Raoul. Um, it's great to talk to you. I would like to learn more about our plans for the upcoming years in terms of technologies and platforms. How will Tech5 uh, look like in five years in terms of uh, its technology development? So, uh, as you know, the company was founded on the principles of inclusion. Uh, the company has always aspired to build and deliver technologies in terms of identity management such that we can achieve the the vision of building a identity management system that serves the entire uh, society right and we're talking about all the six or seven billion people on this planet and not about some part of the you know layer of the society so from a technology perspective we are always investing in the aspects of the identity lifecycle management such that we play important role in every step of the identity lifecycle. And we ensure that whatever we build is built such a way that it does not restrict any part of the you know population from using that technology. And what does that even mean, right? So for example, in biometrics, we all understand uh, that we have to capture biometrics, we have to process them, then we have to do uh, ensure that it's a unique identity and then finally you have to ensure that people can actually use that identity. So from that aspect, uh, let's start from the capturing perspective. Uh, you have all been aware of uh, technologies that are out there or sensors and scanners that allow you to scan fingerprints, iris and face. But what we all know that mobile phone penetration is, you know, uh, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere out there. And it's a awesome piece of hardware where we have a perfect camera system, we have a, a really good processing power, and why can we not leverage that to collect some of the biometric uh, modalities? When I say modalities, basically you can capture fingerprints, you can capture face, you can capture voice, palm, and so on by using this one single device. Now, by doing that, you're basically scaling the acquisition process that can be, uh, you know, using any phone that is available in the market and scaling that the uh, process such that, you know, you can go out there in the field and gather that information required at a very cost-effective way. So the acquisition part uh, is where, you know, you'll use these mobile phones to basically go out there, capture the biometric information, and, um, you know, it, it helps you to scale quickly and cost-effectively because there's a lot of mobile phones out there and people can go in the field without having any dependency on infrastructure. The, uh, then, they come, the, then comes the part when you take these image, uh, you know, biometrics, process them to ensure the uniqueness of the identity. This is where our core competency comes in place, where we build very large scale systems uh, and we have algorithms that are NIST evaluated and certified. And we have been, as part of our inclusive strategy investing in biometric modalities that are quite popular today like facial recognition fingerprint recognition and iris recognition but not only that we are also further investing and going to keep investing in other technologies that will come in naturally something that you can capture for example voice or palm and we may also do some uh, some uh, radical shift in the way biometrics are matched today uh, for example Today, we all talk about uh, matching fingerprints using traditional approaches, but we are also investing and talking about this, and I've mentioned this in ID4Africa, that why do you have to operate in a, in a red box? You know, you can think out of the box and then use the information, the extra information that you get from a mobile capture to further enhance the deduplication capabilities. So we'll keep investing in the technology in terms of matching uh, and the biometrics. But at the same time, we'll also be building state-of-the-art platforms that use this and that can serve uh, the large-scale requirements and be also readily available to be integrated in uh, initiatives like OSEA and MOSIC, where our products naturally fit. Um, now, this is all about the matching part of it, right? You have this billion people enrolled and everybody has a unique ID. 
Then comes the part, how do you make the identity useful in a way that people can really use it in their daily lives, every transaction? And how do you make it such that you don't have to be a digitally savvy person, you don't have to have the digital skills, or how can you make it useful even without uh, any digital infrastructure? So we have all been using all kinds of identity proofs, right from um, a, you know a, a card, a passport, uh, and, and you know with this whole new trend about digital technologies or digital identities. What we are trying to do are saying that uh, let's take this identity in a form of a digital credential and make it such that it could be used in an offline or an online mode. You know, I would like to stress on the word offline because no matter what everybody says, we all know that the the planet is still not covered with full uh, internet connection or any type of connectivity. There are still large pockets of uh, people and population who either do not have a phone or do not have connection, uh, internet connection, right? So we are trying to get the security that is available in a digital identity and then see if we can implement it in a physical credential such that it could be verified uh, in an offline manner and uh, you know could be done using a smartphone. Uh, and this is where we have heavily invested and we think we have a really good approach of sol solving this uh, issue by using what we call ST5 digital ID. Now, even though it's called a digital ID, it is a digital ID in an offline form. And we have, we are addressing the problem of, uh, you know, this digital divide. If I were to go into the, the details of this digital ID, uh, you know, it's very simple to talk about and understand and absorb that it is nothing but a person carrying their own credentials in their own hand and this is where you can relate it to the word decentralized decoupled, which means that in a printable format, in a machine readable code, I can carry my own digital information or biometric information or identity information and then walk around. And it could be easily printed using a standard printing technology. So for the person who's carrying and wants to prove his identity, they basically need a printed form of it which can of course be enhanced to you know carry it in a digital wallet and whatnot. But let's talk about the lowest denominator where all the you know the basic implementation would be a printout. Now you're carrying your credential in a decentralized form, and then you're you know going and proving your identity. On the other hand, whoever is authorized and uh, approved to verify your credential will have the right set of uh, let's say uh, you know approvals. They will have a mobile phone, a smartphone, nothing more required. And that person can now verify your credential by just pointing the camera, scanning the the information from the the, the code, uh, the digital ID, and then taking live samples of your biometrics. Could be a face, could be a finger, could be a voice, could be a palm, and God knows what we can add to it uh, in future. And we we can then verify on the spot if that credential really belongs to you. Not only that, we can also tell if the credential came from the right authority. And that is basically the underlying principle of proving somebody's identity for you know conducting a transaction. And that transaction could be anything. Could be a civil services, I mean, a social services transaction, could be a financial transaction, you name it. Uh, but at the beginning of any transaction, what I need to prove, and you know, you you as an identity carrier have to prove is that it belongs to you. And I, as a service provider, or a like party, I need to verify that actually it is a valid document. And if we can achieve that at the lowest friction level uh, without having to worry about the digital divide, you're solving a biggest problem in this whole uh, you know, world where we are constantly interacting with each other. So we, we have some breakthroughs uh, and we're gonna constantly keep improving it. And what that means is keep adding more modalities to it, making it further more usable. Already there's a lot of phone coverage, which means a lot, uh, many brands of phones that are out there, it doesn't have to be a, a super expensive phone, can be used to verify the credential. And on the other hand, we are developing uh, technologies, uh, you know, to make sure that the, the cores are read more or the, the digital ID is read more efficiently. And this is where, you know, I'll bring in the whole discussion about artificial intelligence or machine learning approaches. 
as we all know, we are all going from traditional to machine learning approaches, uh, which commonly called as AI. Uh, we are the experts in biometrics. We claim to be the experts of the biometrics because we know what we are doing. Uh, what we are doing is that we are transitioning from a traditional approach of biometric matching to the artificial intelligence slash machine learning approaches by way of uh, training the algorithm such that they are learning more than a human engineered model could do. They're extracting more information. And then since we already have very proven uh, traditional algorithms, we are able to combine the power of two, at least today, we strongly believe that at one point, these AI-based algorithms will take over the you know, human build or machine, um, uh, human engineered models. But to, to, today, if I speak about it, it's going to be a combination. Maybe in two or three years, we'll fully replace you know, totally AI-based algorithms. The AI-based approaches are not only used in biometric capture because we have to ensure it's a live image and you know, it's a good quality image. It's also used in the matching technologies because we are improving the matching performance of the algorithms using the artificial intelligence aspects. And then going towards the credential verification, we are also inventing uh, you know, different ways of, uh, of uh, efficiently reading the, the digital credentials on lower resolution phones. At the same time, you know, inventing in the aspects of uh, security through homographic encryption or using your biometric as your password so that you don't expect a poor farmer to remember a long password or PIN code uh, to reveal his information. And at the same time, uh, uh, you don't put the burden uh, you know, of the system to figure out how to recover pass you know, lost passwords and stuff. Uh, so we're, we're, we are inventing in those directions also. There's a lot more to come uh, uh, for the next five years. But in the end, the goal of this company and our strategy for the next five years is to reach these masses, uh, you know, where we see silos of silos of, of different kinds of uh, identity solutions and interactions and transactions. And, you know, the world trying to solve specific verticals or specific layers of the society, uh, you know, it could sound very ambitious to say that we're not going horizontal or vertical. We are going in a square. We want to get everything captured as much as as much as we can uh, through a, a you know pragmatic, but at the same time innovative and out of the box thinking approaches to you know uh, bring the technology to everybody. So, Raul, tell me what is a typical day of a CDO of Tech Five? As a chief technology officer, you know I manage a couple of things, rather a lot of things because we are a technology company and uh, it all revolves around building technologies that are uh, fulfilling our mission as well as aspiring to achieve our vision. What do, what do I even mean by that? Uh, we are, as a company, you know, we are doing so many things, which means we have to be very creative, efficient, and at the same time, be able to prove that what we are doing is actually valid or, you know, if people really believe into that. Uh, so for example, when we are doing AI-based technology developments, we are taking our previous experience and my research team uh, is basically taking the knowledge, the domain knowledge uh, of the biometrics industry and identity management and building new approaches of uh, biometric matching algorithms uh, such that this uh, serve two main goals of any system. One is achieving high accuracy and reducing the footprint of the hardware. Overall, the goal is to achieve a lower total cost of ownership to the end user. Now, this you can imagine is basically uh, having you know engineers not only collect data with consent, you know training new models and building these algorithms and testing internally. Then we have to spend a lot of time validating this with uh, some national you know well reputed institutions like NIST. Uh, I could claim anything in the vacuum saying we are the best, right? But who's who's to prove that, right? And this is where we are uh, investing a lot of our resources to make sure that our algorithms are tested or evaluated by NIST. And it doesn't stop at NIST. We actually work with uh, some third-party labs who are accredited by NIST or ISO. And we are constantly testing with them to make sure that uh, somebody else says the same things that we can claim. 
while doing that, we, of course, you can imagine that not only it's an internal research, we are also working with academia. Uh, you know, we're affiliates with institutions like CITER, uh, you know, which has uh, a lot of uh, universities and it's institutions like ENIAP from Switzerland collaborating to build new biometric approaches and uh, and anything to do with biometrics. There are some things that we, even we are not touching today or we don't have on the roadmap, but they may become relevant in the future. Uh, for example, detecting morphs or, you know, uh, artificially generated faces, uh, you know, we hear about defects and stuff. So, I, you know, uh, we are working with these institutes uh, to share knowledge. We collaborate uh, in some way or the other, and this is going to keep growing for us. Now, if you look from a purely research perspective, this is our investment. Uh, but as you can imagine, we are still a limited resource company. So which means we are doing which, what we are good at. But there are some other modalities that we think are really relevant today. And we need to somehow fill in some of these gaps or at least enhance the offering by including them. And to give an example, uh, it could be a voice or palm technology, which we don't have today. But we work with the, the top tier providers of those technologies and we work together to uh, make an offering that serves the, the need today. Yeah, it may be changes in five years, but I think for the next five years, we are solid on what we need. Now, when, when these research algorithms come out, I have another part of my team that is purely about engineering and they're designing platforms that can be easily deployed, easily supported, and then can scale at these large, you know, uh, unfathomable numbers that we talk about. How many people have we enrolled? 300 million, you know, each has like 10 prints. And you can imagine the, the size of the databases and the number of transactions that have been processed. How do you make sure they're properly distributed and so on? So there's a, a group of engineering people who are basically working on these products and developing, you know, state-of-the-art platforms, if you will. And then I'll basically, uh, or rather I'll talk about the digital ID aspect of it, which is again, there is a specific, uh, I would say, class of people who are investing into that part of the, the company. Uh, because it, it it's actually an amalgamation of uh, uh, of uh, multiple aspects of identity, and when I say that, what I mean is there is the biometric aspect, then there is the machine readable core technology and how to make it efficient, and there is the digital ID aspect that everybody talks about, right? Like verifiable credentials, how do you do consent management, and all this stuff. So that team is basically putting this together and there's cryptography and there is security and then privacy aspects, how do we address those? So there's a team that is spending a lot of resources and effort and time to build that. And that team is actually spending more time in making this thing future-proof. While we know that uh, you know everybody talks about GDPR, everybody talks about consent management, provisioning W3C standards for verifiable credentials, how do you put it together? Uh, but at the same time, not making it too complex to not be used anywhere. Uh, we are making these uh, solutions, again, to repeat what I've been saying, you know, all across my interviews, is that we want to make it frictionless such that anybody can use it, yeah, and anywhere. That's, that's the key. Okay, Raul, uh, what do you believe makes Tech5 different um, among other biometric providers? Because obviously it is a very competitive area and uh, Tech5 needs to differentiate. That's a very good question. Uh, and I would say, I personally believe that the company has two uh, pillars, you know, of differentiation. One is a purely technological aspect, and then the other is the, the values of the company. So from a technology aspect, uh, as I said, you know, we are investing in, in technologies that are future-proof and evolving and constantly innovating uh, such that we are the best in the market, right? So when we talk about AI-based matching technologies, improving accuracy, reducing the total cost of ownership, uh, ease of deployment, aligning with most SIPs and OCEAs of the world, we are making ourselves different from the other providers such that not only do we have the best possible technology out there today, but at the same time, it is a uh, part of the ecosystem and it is you know working in different scenarios. But then the other aspect of it is that it's, it starts with the the basic, uh, you know, founding principles of the company, which is inclusion. Uh, we, as a company, uh, you know, and I like to use the word empathy, we empathize with the end case users 
the people who are actually going to use the uh, technology and uh, where it's going to be used for what use case. Uh, uh, so we understand what the problems are and I, you know, and we spend a great deal of effort and energy in understanding what is the real problem. We're not trying to build something and push it down the throat of somebody saying, yeah, this is a great technology, you should use it. We have actually learned through our experience and I will, you know, personally give credit to all the, the people in the company, the management team and, and, and everybody who's part of this has been handpicked because they have in their life and career de dealt with different problems of identity management. And we all have agreed that there are ways to solve this more efficiently. And I could uh, easily say that, you know, apart from being a good biometric technology provider, the way we are approaching the end-to-end -end life cycle is what differentiates us from the most of the biometric providers. You'll find silos of companies who are either selling an algorithms and an ABIS, uh, if you will, the biometric part of it, or somebody selling credentials. And somehow there is a gap. They don't believe that, um, you know, it should be looked at this together and see, you know, how do we actually solve problems on both ends of the identity life cycle? We are the ones who are actually putting that thought. And I think, uh, or we believe or rather that we have something that we understand will solve most of the problems when it comes to the end-to-end -end life cycle. And um, going back to the whole aspect of empathy, we know the real problems, not only from the perspective of the technology uh, and then the deployment issues and what are the user needs. We also understand sometimes that uh, what could be the regulatory restrictions, you know, what are the funding requirements or what, you know, how can the uh, institution who's implementing the, the identity program be helped in a way to achieve it uh, su such that, you know, uh, we can help them self-sustain the solution, for example. Uh, we could work with the, the governments in order to efficiently uh, realize this program in such a way that they are not cornered in a way or, you know, they have a, a, a way out of getting the program rolled out today and subsequently, you know, build ecosystem around it such that it becomes really useful, but at the same time sustainable. Uh, and the strategy of the company is majorly built. When I say strategy, financial strategy, of the company is built around the concept of how do we collaborate with the institutions in order to make them sustainable uh, so that they can keep improvising and be thing. And then we become part of that uh, food chain such that we have, uh, as you call, skin in the game uh, to ensure that we are constantly investing and making sure that the systems are up, running, and, you know, uh, upgraded and there is no outage and, uh, you know, doesn't matter, you know, five years from now, there could be a different breed of phones and we'll make sure it still works on everything. So, so you know, by having that character of uh, aligning with the, not only the end use case and the end user's needs, but with the customer really makes us different. Uh, and because of our, you know, previous experiences with such programs and everything, we can express this with confidence that we know what we are solving we know what the issues are and we know how to solve them. Well, it was a very uh, interesting conversation. You can tell, you know, by the way I talk passionately about it. Uh, and it's for the, I can talk about the whole company. We are really passionate about what we are doing. We believe we are solving some real problems in the world. And uh, we are going to aspire to become that company, right, that has been solving problem for the 7 billion people on this planet. By the time we are done, it will be 8 billion. Um, so we will keep investing uh, into, you know, all directions. When I say investing, not only in research and engineering and technology, but also making sure that people understand the value proposition and also making sure that it actually reaches to the right audience. Um, so the, the mission for us every day is, you know, how do we keep building this, uh, you know, towards that direction and we achieve that vision. Um, so we have a great strategy. Uh, we're looking forward to execute on that strategy. We have the right people. Uh, we are super confident about our, about our team. Uh, and I can speak for every last person that works for the company. Uh, and uh, I can also confidently say that every person believes in, in the company's uh, vision and mission. So we are sure that, you know, 
five, five years from now, we are going to be where we predict to be. Hi, Amea. It's great talking to you. Um, I would like to know, well, Tech5 is an international technology company, right? So what are the main target geographies and verticals for the next uh, five years for us in, you know, in a sales perspective? Yeah, thanks, Ilya. Uh, so while Tech5 is headquartered in Geneva, uh, over the last four years, we have quickly expanded in some of the other regions, uh, primarily driven by the type of opportunities that we have won and the kind of partner locations that we have been in. Our focus is on uh, 40 different uh, vertical markets globally. Uh, from a geographical perspective, uh, the way we have expanded is uh, we have offices uh, in India to support uh, the Asian uh, countries. Uh, we have soon expanded in Australia with a subsidiary. Uh, Middle East and Africa is a strategically important region for us. So we have had an office in Dubai. Um, recently, we have opened one in Lisbon to focus on the European Union or the European region as such. Uh, and as well as we have an office in uh, the Americas region that caters to the North American and the Latin American region. Um, what are the main uh, channels for sales to introduce the technologies and to sell them to the market? Yeah, so Tech5 being an uh, expert in biometrics and digital identity technologies, it's extremely important for us to sell through our partner network. And when we talk about partner networks, uh, our ideal partner profile would be a company that has done projects in biometrics uh, as well as identity. And when we talk about uh, projects, we are saying uh, taking our technologies or similar technologies, uh, integrating it into an overall solution and then selling the solution to the end customer. From a Tech5 perspective, uh, the kind of end customers that we cater to are governments or enterprises. Uh, the verticals that we cater to include anything from national ID to a voter ID to a banking or a fintech or a refugee ID as such. So it's extremely important for us to go ahead and qualify partners uh, that bring this kind of an expertise. And it's our goal and our aim to always keep on supporting the partners so that they become successful and which in turn leads to our success. Okay, thank you, Mia. Well, the last question is the most interesting one, of course, uh, is what are the um, sales goals and targets and uh, ideas for the next uh, five years? What do you plan to achieve for Tech5? Yeah, as, as, a, as a sales team, uh, our goal is very clear. Uh, it's to exceed revenues with a clear focus on profitability. Uh, we plan to do that by selling innovative biometric and digital ID technologies through our partner channel in the markets that we serve today, but as well as expand the geographies and markets as we go along uh, over the next few years. Okay, so and um, do you plan to grow Tech5 big? How much? Yeah, we have big ambitions and uh, we plan to grow Tech5 almost 10x uh, in revenues from where it is today over the next five years. Sounds very ambitious. Thank you very much, Amea, for your time. Thank you, Julia. Okay, Neil, um, I would like to know uh, more about our work providers. Um, how do we onboard them? How uh, do we work with them? What can we give them? Why are they interested in us? And what are our next plans for them? So let's start with the first bit. Who are our partners? Where are they? What are they doing? Okay. Well, I think Amaya was talking earlier on about our partners. And, and our partners are really important to us because we're a technology company. As you know, we, we provide innovative technology. Um, and so it's our partners that give us the access, you know, and the, the reach to our sort of worldwide marketplace. Um, so we've got partners and we target partners in all of our strategic regions and across all of our strategic marketplaces. So, you know, we spend quite a lot of time uh, investigating partners, investigating our markets, investigating our regions in order to select the right partners, you know, that we can then onboard in order to reach our customers. And what we provide those partners with is um, innovative technology solutions and we equip them with those solutions and we equip them and enable them with case studies and understandings of how they can use those solutions to address the marketplace or address the region that we've um, onboarded those partners for. Now, there's many ways we do that. Um, 
But one of the key things we do um, when we onboard partners is really provide that support for them around how you can use our technology, where our technology um, provides value, uh, and how our technology helps you establish identity at a biometric level, you know, between between the person, the individual, the the employee, the citizen, you know, and whatever needs it is, you know, that that they're addressing, whether that's healthcare, whether that's um, refugee status, whether that's benefits, whether it's banking. And we can provide a number of case study studies, sorry, to our partners, um, you know, to help them see where uh, the markets are for them uh, in their region or, or in their vertical. Um, one of the things we want to do really, we want to really, really expand this program in 2023. So uh, one of the things we've been working on is an online knowledge base you know, so that we can provide our certified partners with access to all of our marketing material, all of our brochures, presentations, videos, even down to a sort of integration developer level so they can understand at a very deep technical level how they, how they use our software. Um, and we're going to go online with that with all of our certified partners in, partners in 2023. You know, and that will give them 24-7 access to this material, which will be you know, constantly updated as we develop our products. Uh, some of the other things we do, um, uh, some of our key technologies like digital identity, um, things like um, our digital identity toolkit and the, all of the pieces of technology that go together, six or seven pieces of technology that go together, that, that make that work, um, we provide those demos. We provide them in a white labeled manner, so they can they can then brand them to them themselves, to to their branding, to even the government ministry branding, so that they can they can show you know a pilot or a POC, and we will support them in things like proof of concepts and pilots, so that you know we can show the real value of how we address these use cases and how we address the real needs of the ministry, the bank, the aid agency, whoever, whoever that is. Um, and to do that, we have, you know, pre-sale support globally um, in various, in all of our key regions in order to support, support those partners with the demos, with the POCs, uh, with the uh, pilots. What is our value for them? Why are we different? And, uh... Well, why our partners would go with us and not with other biometric yeah. providers? Yeah, it's a really, it's a good question. I mean, um, I think, I mean, first of all, the fact we've got, you know, really highly rated um, algorithms in all three modalities, all built, developed in-house. That's what, you know, just from a technical point of view, that's one of the first things that we bring. But we also bring real competitive value with that as well. Um, so we, you know, we, we, we really do bring some value in the ease of use, the ability to use our SDKs to embed those those pieces of technology into their solutions. We constantly get feedback from our partners, you know, of like how easy it was to use our technology, how easy it was to understand it and embed it into what they do. Um, and, that, and that comes really, I know, from a deep expertise and um, experience. I mean, we, you know, as sort of, all the other members of the management team, McKinnon or Raoul, have been saying, you know, we, we come from a background, you know, with long, deep history in biometrics and understanding, you know, what the solution providers need in order to build that into their solutions. Um, and also, we come from a background of identity. So, you know, we go back and have, you know, have experience and have uh, understanding of some of the biggest biometric and biggest ID programs across the globe. And, and I think all of that experience and all of that knowledge, you know, helps us provide um, technology and products and a, and a way of working and a, and, a, and a service, you know, that is a benefit to our, to our partners. And, you know, what comes along with that is references as well. Some of the biggest, as I say, some of the biggest biometric references in the world, you know, which helps our partners, you know, when they take us with them and power their solutions with our technology, helps them sort of seem uh, viable to the customers that they are going and talking to. So um, what kind of partners do we have and how do we cooperate with them? Right. So partners, I mean, very, very varied. 
uh, in terms of partners. I mean, um, I mean, in terms of, I mean, we get some people who are just resellers of technology, so they're just licensed resellers, uh, and and then we got other people who want to take technology and build it to something else. So an integrator, a system integrator, and, and also, you know, they vary from being, you know, somebody who's global, so a big global system integrator, you know, who who's maybe working in multiple countries delivering multiple solutions to very regional players you know some some much smaller partners you know who are regionally focused um so you know the the, the range of partners is is wide you know and which pieces of technology they're interested in and, and what they're going to do with it it varies and so does their skill set so it's one of the reasons that we you know we really need when we when we're sort of introduced to somebody new, when sales you know introduces somebody new, or somebody comes to our website or meets us on a on a stand, you know, we do have to sort of evaluate them, and you know, and to some extent, sort of, um, you know, we have to sort of uh, certify them, you know, in terms of how do we support them, what they are, you know, what sort of support are they going to need, you know, uh, but also just to sort of make sure that. Um, you know, we've got some control over what's happening with our technology as well. So we get a good understanding of, you know, where they want to deploy it, what it's going to be used for, you know, and, and how that provides a sort of inclusivity that, you know, we, we're in, you know, we have the business for in terms of, you know, Tech 5 in, in making sure that it's sort of, you know, providing, they are serving that inclusivity for citizens, whoever, in terms of giving the access to the, you know, to the things like healthcare and, and government benefits that, you know, that we're all principled in this business sport, essentially. Um, I mean, that's one of our key principles, really, is control of our technologies. And, and, and you know, certifying partners, you know, helps us with that, you know, control of technology uh, and, and understanding where it's going to be used and what it's going to be used for and making sure people are using it properly, you know, and have all of the support they need in order to do that. So, and uh, well, how do we certify them? Do we give them a training? Yeah, there's a range of things. And, and as I said earlier, you know, we, we've got the knowledge base that we're going to roll out this year. There's a few other things that are you know, going to come along with that knowledge base. And as we build our pre-sales team, you know, we're, we're going to be um, re-looking at our partner onboarding system and re-looking uh, you know, through this year and, and enhancing that onboarding uh, to make sure that they get the training they need, um, that they get the materials they need, that they they understand, you know, how to use those materials. You know, when it comes to to, to explaining to their customers, you know, what they're providing. Um, you know, so we're we're definitely you know advancing that scheme in terms of onboarding and certifying people, um, and also you know, having a look at how we maintain that as we move forward. So you know. We'll, just keeping in touch with partners, making sure they get the latest materials, making sure they know the latest things, the latest case studies, you know, where there's been wins elsewhere in the world that might be useful to them. So, I mean, it's a big emphasis for us over the, you know, certainly in 2023, but ongoing, and because they're so important to us to reach the markets that we want to reach. Well, um, there was a pleasurable discussion. Thank you very much, Neil. And uh, let's see what who partners attracting in 2023 yeah it'll be i think it'll be exciting times to sort of release the new knowledge base you know provide people with access get the feedback um you know and uh i do think it's gonna really change how we interact and how we work with our partners and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it hi rob uh well my first question would be is as we are starting the execution of our five-year strategy what do you think Tech Five will be in five years? How will it look like? Tech Five's history is is rooted in biometrics and in some of the biggest ID programs in the world, the likes of Indonesia, as we know. Um, we play in all of the parts of the value chain of identity, whether it be establishing somebody's fundamental identity in terms of the big databases and the matching and deduplication of data right through to issuing a credential and then verifying it, authenticating people in real life uh, use cases. Um, and so I think 
given all of those elements that Tech5 brings to the table, that's where I see our strategy taking us in terms of being a, a key player in digital ID in five years' time. The company is very much a team effort of the management team of, of the company of Tech5. Um, the way it works is clearly we have some um, investment goals, which are at this point confidential, um, which creates an objective for that five-year horizon. And building on the core strengths and expertise of the company, we, uh, we build out a path to reach that objective over five years. So as we look at those core strengths, we divide the market into four key areas for Tech5, and those are underlying fundamental identification, which to many people means those big ABIS systems where Tech5's heritage comes from. We then have the capture expertise, which is all about ensuring that whatever is the input data we're going to be using to match people to biometric data later down the line, we're capturing the best data possible to make that efficient, fast, accurate. So whether it's a face image, we're talking about all of the variables and catch capturing the best face possible for matching. Likewise with fingerprint. And as, as we know from um, a lot of our publicity, etc., we are very focused on contactless technologies, especially when it comes to fingerprint. Um, Iris is, has been a key focus of the company in the past, and that's something you'll hear more about in the future around mobile phones. Uh, we've recently just announced voice, the addition of voice biometrics to the portfolio. Again, another key capture variable. Uh, now we're looking into Palm and other things may come along, but you, so you've got that whole capture layer. That's the second key area that we focus on. The third one is the digital credential itself. There's a lot of focus in the industry about onboarding people, about getting their data into some sort of system or using their data for some sort of gated process to get access to something, to make a transaction, whatever it may be. Um, but not much focus on creating a, a usable credential, which is where we think we bring real differentiation. So issuance of those credentials. For us, fully digital credentials but with a with a, a flavor which plays to the inclusion part, which is fully digital but printable. So not relying on everybody having a mobile phone or a tablet or a computer, which, as we know, doesn't work for 6 billion people on the planet. Uh, and then the, the final area is in the... We lump them together and we know that some players talk about verification and authentication being two different things for us. I think if you ask 10 different people which is verification and which is authentication, you get 10 different answers. So we see them as the same uh, the same characteristic of the market used in different ways depending on the industry or the use case, but we put them together. So it's those four rungs of the ladder that form the strategy in terms of what we develop, the partners we seek to uh, to play with the markets we address, the vertical markets, the geographical markets, uh, and fundamentally where we see the, the strategy going. So you mentioned 6 billion people for whom um, the current approach may not work. What do you mean by that? Because I know about 1.5 billion people who do not have uh, any uh, legal identity. Is that about the same number? Uh, I read the other day that the world population has just recently um, surpassed 8 billion. And by a lot of estimates, something like 6 billion of those people, while a lot of them may possess what we would call legal identity of one form or another, what they certainly don't possess, those 6 billion people, is a high-end smartphone. And so where many, many solutions that claim to be all about digital identity rest on people having a high-end smartphone, clearly that doesn't work for those 6 billion out of the 8 billion people on the planet. And so our focus is making sure that whatever digital identity we develop works for everybody. Well, this is a big ambition and obviously TechPi will probably need to grow its team. How do you see it? How big do you see it in the pioneers and where? 
Yeah, so we're, we're growing quite quickly already. Um, our The strategy, any strategy you build for five years clearly needs to take account of what team do you build, what team do you recruit in order to deliver on that strategy. The strategy we finalized on um, sees us doubling in size in terms of people. Uh, we currently have people on three continents and that will largely remain the same but one thing we're fundamentally doing is we're building up a um, we'll call it a headquarters in Portugal in Lisbon we've opened an office in Lisbon well thank you very much Rob it was very insightful we are looking forward to hearing more um, in the near future yep thank you very much um, clearly lots to do but very very exciting times for Tech5 okay thank you Recently, we at Tech5 introduced a new branding and a several new brand names, like Tech5 Only Match, representing our matching biometric platforms, Tech5 Air Snap, uh, combining technologies for contactless biometric capture with mobile phone, and Tech5 Cryptograph, a secure and private digital container for holding personal and biometric data of a digital ID owner. One of the Tech5's goals as a company is to contribute to the ethical use of biometrics and create a greater understanding on the market about the existing technologies solving their problems. And this is one of our key principles and we will stick to it in the coming years. Tech5 regularly contributes as a member of such organizations as the Biometric Institute Open Identity Exchange, ID2020, European Association of Biometrics, and others. Together with our partners and customers, today we are building the future of the biometric market. Thank you for watching this interview. We hope it was insightful and will continue to share our knowledge in our newsletters and social media. Stay tuned.